Hello and welcome to another episode of the Git Python live development stream. This time we're actually not doing Git Python, but we are doing Git DB because Git Python is quite ready for release. And uh, we have to re-release Git DB because there's a new uh, exception type basically that comes from Git DB anyway. Um, re-release is required and uh, for some reason a new issue popped up in the latest release, uh, 063, I think that's the latest on Git, uh, oh, sorry, on PyPy right now. And it's quite a weird one, testing stalls at test pack blah, blah, somewhere, uh, but only on Debian Wheezy. So it doesn't happen for me, I couldn't reproduce this just yet. And it just happens on Debian Wheezy. So Jerry Coptic was so kind to dig in there. I mean, he really dug in and uh, found out where that happens, kind of. And what I have to do now, is, I suppose, is to figure out what's wrong here and why that happens. And uh, yeah, for that I downloaded I downloaded Wheezy for AMD sixty four. Does he say which one? No, it just says Wheezy, so it could be thirty two bit as well. And yeah, let's go through the well tiny hassle of setting up a new virtual machine. Oh, awesome! It found it already. Exactly, that's the one I want. <laughs> I want to install. Thank you. Just do it. No, do not share with other users. Is this where I have my virtual machines? I would rather not want to throw it somewhere else. Uh, documents, parallels. Yes, that's where the virtual machines are. Fine, throw it there. 167 gigabyte only. Gee, I have been. I have been putting on a lot. I should be like 200 gigabytes free. Anyway. All good. Uh, really? A megabyte of hard disks? Really? That seems odd. Show me. Ah, yeah. Ah, that's real space. So it's an expanding disk. Can expand to 64 gigabyte. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't have to care, but also I think that 16 will just be fine. Yeah. Just do it. Mm hmm. Thank you. 16 and the rest should be fine. I will not need anything fancy. No fancy sound. USB. No web cameras. You know, like it wouldn't have to care, but also I know I just turn off what I don't need. Hoping that I can still reproduce the issue. Maybe I should have left everything on. Memory one gig, CPUs two. All right, all right. Isolate Linux from Mac. Actually, no. We wanna. We wanna possibly. We don't wanna isolate that just yet. Fine. Settings are good. Continue. Let's uh, just do it. Let's just install it right away. Even though a live mode would probably do it, but yeah, no. Thank you. That Germany is not on the lists, you know. Europe. <laughs> uh, yeah, United States. Keyboard layout. Key map. Yes. That's actually my key map because it's so much easier to get things done with a, 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 an English layout, a US layout. And yeah, 
I expect that installation to be done real quick. <laughs> Actually, nice to see, you know, how automated all this is. I really have to do nothing. Debian Wheezy x64 VM. Yeah. Long name is invalid underscores. I'm sorry. Thanks for killing my name. Oh, yeah, no underscores. I think dash can possibly work. Anyway, I don't risk it. X64 VM. Hope you're good with that. Domain name none. <sighs> yeah. Some stars for the root password. Full name. Real name. Yeah, can as well be mine. Nope. Thank you. Okay. No LVM, no encrypted. Use entire disk. Thank you. All files in one partition. Yeah, just do it. Do it. Finish partitioning. Awesome. Swap. Actually, I could disable swap, but on the other hand, I don't care. I just keep swap. I change to disk. Yes, do it. Okay. Now we're actually installing. Let's see how fast that is. 180 megabyte per second, I've seen. 100 megabyte. It's kind of bursting it, huh? It's not continuously delivering that performance. Yeah, well, maybe CPU's the bottleneck here. Well, it could be. Possibly, but it has two cores and it's just using one. Supplement software, what? Network mirror. Use network mirror. Package manager. Well, sure. From Germany, yes. Uh, why not? No proxy. Yeah. Scanning the mirror. All right, setting up apt or apt. I don't know how they want it to be called. Nice. I hope it doesn't update because that would run over the network and I really just want to have a minimal installation here, not even a desktop or anything. So please, I think now it's the network that is busy here. Yeah, which could be a bit slow because I'm streaming this and if I'm streaming, I'm using all my upstream all the time which makes everything else, uh, of course, slower than usual. Ah, oh, it's so sad. My upstream limit there. But anyway, come on, finish it, impatience. You know, it's a bit unfair, it says three of three, two of two, and it's kind of never done because it constantly changes the amount of files that it's retrieving from somewhere. Probably it's doing all this in parallel, which is cool and stuff, but still. Install, yes, do it. Master boot record, grab. What else could it do than to put it to the master boot record? I don't know. Installation complete. Okay, remove all hard disks. Um, Oh, did it disconnect already? Does it mean it's disconnected? Well, apparently it means that. Fine. So I'm quite curious to see if I will be able to reproduce this issue. And then I'm even more curious whether I will be able to fix the issue because it is, you know, everything that is related to 
to zip to the zip package is sort of odd. Oh yeah, cool. Let's be a user. I like. Um, yeah, I think we should install parallels tools. Uh -huh. So what, it said something and I didn't read it. Open the terminal, go to CD DVD drive and run the following. Need to unmount the installation CD and then mount it again. Okay. Okay. So is it, is it there now? Yes, it's there. Okay. Awesome. Ah. Install. Why doesn't it allow me to execute this? Ha! Awesome. I didn't know that. I'm not I'm not a sudo. Okay. I thought I was uh Ha. Ah, all right. Let's, let's be root then just for this one. And I still oh, don't understand why I can't execute this one. <laughs> oh, maybe it's some sort of protection thing going on there. Oh, I'm not even root yet. No. Permission denied. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, yeah, that's probably what it told me. It's probably this uh, oh, exec. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I know I'm still in there. Try again. Wrong password, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Really? Okay, it's not executable. Did I not unmount this? Yeah, good. So now maybe you will do what I want. Yay! Awesome! Do it. Because that will allow me to access my max disk. Actually, I'm wondering why it's missing. Why has to download these? Come on! I mean, I have a, I have a disk mounted there, huh? That should just do it. See, but it doesn't. Anyway, it's getting getting a lot of data here, and I believe that it should be done any moment now. Okay, let's close this. Let's. Save some bandwidth here. And <clears throat> in the meanwhile, I think it will be best to have a look at the file, git db streams, stream. And then we are at, one eighty one. Here. So apparently, uh, while reading a pack in git db, which happens during the testing, it will it will enter some while loops and then keep decompressing this. Uh, 
in the with the page size so it's quite you know it reads small chunks only and uh, in any case we will be in a loop and I mean in an end possibly endless loop potentially endless and I think that's where we get because uh, zip doesn't have a status attribute and this is apparently where we don't break out of and the question is why that happens oh by the way I could assign myself I don't have a milestone here and I will acknowledge it once I could reproduce it so what do you say Restart with your machine, yes, please. Uh, does it restart now? Nope. Now it does. <sighs> the thing is that Wheezy is not even an old release. I think it's the latest, right? So it should. I mean, if GitDB fails there, then this is a kind of a critical thing. It doesn't even only fail, it goes into an endless loop. And this is not good. Nothing I can uh, tolerate. So in theory, we have media PSF, and there we have all our stuff. Oh, really? I think I should not have this thing mounted. Sorry for that. And let's try again. <coughs> Home documents dev bdep OSS lib git python or three no arc git ext git db and there we are. I don't have nose test yet. I don't have pip yet. At search. Was it that? At search pip. At, I think it was app file. Oh, damn it. Such a long time ago that I've used a Debian system, even though I always liked them. I kind of forgot some commands here. So. Uh, Ah, oh, come on. Apt cache. Yes, apt cache search. Pip, maybe. I don't know if I'm supposed to use pip even. <sighs> and yeah, I th think what I don't like is that I'm constrained to this tiny, tiny shell. So uh, let's see. Ah. Let's see if we can get SSS, uh, SSD, S <laughs> SSHD running. How was that again? Uh, Etc. In the D S S H status, it's running already. Awesome. Um, Yeah, let's figure out how we can, ah, sorry, Windows. Whoa, no, wait, there's no if config here. Okay, I'm really out of date. Uh, actually, one, want uh, the SSH port to be redirected. Uh, to something that I can get, or actually, I, I want to have the IP. Oh. Uh, well, what's the IP of my virtual machine, and how do I figure this out without if config? Or maybe I just can't execute it? No? Oh, there we go. I just need to be rude. Fine. So 10 to 11. 
Uh, can I can I reach this? 10 to 11, 55, 18 would be awesome. 10 to 11, 55, 18. There we go. Okay. Let's just use this thing then. Okay. Now I have a good shell. Well, I had a good shell before, but I was kind of limited. So let's get out of here. And yeah, I will need to see that all the time. Can I just close this window, but keep it running? I don't know. Yeah, anyway, let's just put it away. Good. So now again, home, ah, sorry, media, PSF, home, documents, dev, bdev, oss, lib, git, python, git, ext. No, wait. <laughs> Good ext, good db. So that's the local version I have here on disk. And now I have to try to get pip on this thing or nose test. No, Python nose. There we go. And which Python versions do I have? Python 2.6 and 2.7. Yeah, well, use, use the nose then that it provides to me at get oh yeah let's first make ourselves sudo please I would really like to not be rude all the time it feels feels wrong do I have vim or something or why vim Vim tiny is this something I can use? It is okay. Sudo -ors. Oh, I have to add myself to the sudo group. Yeah, well. Group add. Ah, oh, I'm really not the. I'm, I don't do this often enough to be knowing how this works on each Linux distribution. Um, group add group group add command create a new group account using the values. No, that's not what I want. Main user user mod group. I think it's capital G groups. Ah, and dash A says append. Okay, dash A G. Awesome. Isn't that easy? User mod dash A G uh, sudoors. And the user sort should be Byron, is it that? Group pseudoers does not exist. Group pseudo. Good enough. And I have to log out and log in again. Let's save this guy. Oh. Now I'm a sudo. -er. Great. Sudo app gets. Huh, how was it called? Python knows? I have no idea. Apt cache search knows. Python knows. There we go. 
sudo apt get install. I messed up the password, of course. Huh. It's getting dark. But there is something cool called a light switch and I've just used it. I'm very proud of myself. Okay, there is nose. And I think we need mock as well. It's an interesting choice to repackage everything because you could just use pip, right? And you would be fine. But they don't, they repack. Maybe it's something related to stability or something uh, so that they control and test that it really, really works so that errors like the one we get now with the hanging is something that you know can be fixed or they use a different release that doesn't have it something like that okay I think now we're ready to go nose test to seven and then we have good db tests I mean I don't have to specify this really but let's just do it and we are hanging in test pack Let's see. Oh, that might already take too much time. Uh, get install htop, always a great tool to have. Thank you. And there we have Python running at full speed in the background. It has a pack open. It doesn't build up memory, so I think it's just in some sort of stupid loop and redoes the same thing. So, amazing. I can acknowledge that. And if I abort this, we're hanging in gitdb stream. Compressed by read 188. That's the one. <clears throat> Current bytes read, that's CBR. And self M. It reads no, it reads nothing. Ah, all right. Oops. So there are plenty of read methods here, I think. Oh, uh, wait, we actually had a line read two to four. Look at that. So if size somehow gets zero, then everything goes, goes crazy. Okay. Actually two to four, I think I wanna be here. And here I wanna be doing the while loop and uh, and there was all, all, all already this testing going on so first thing I think is to test it with Python 2.6 because that might have another zlib implementation and maybe that changes things around just to see I'll see Python 2.6 is working <laughs> amazing Just keeping track. If I could write interestingly, Python 2.6 is working, so is Python 3. And that's an hypothesis that I'm going to prove now. Uh, get install.
Python 3. And yeah, that shall be it for now. Does that work? 14 megabyte? Yeah, go for it. 3.2 we use here. Oh shit, that um, will not work. We probably need 3.3 .3 to make it work. App cache search nose. How's it called? Python 3 nose. Python 3 mock. 3 nose Python. Let me try anyway. Maybe it works. <clears throat> well, and the great moment. Good to be test test pack. Does it even import it? Uh huh. Interesting. Yeah, so Python 3.2 doesn't cut it. Even though I wonder why. Huh, probably this character here. That's amazing, really? So uh, a byte string and an integer if it's just one. Uh, that's Python 3.4, I think. So let's just do a byte, byte string x and do it like, like this. Interesting. How does that even work? Uh, okay, I will, I will. I have to look into this because I think maybe some Python 3 specific code is not running here, even though it shouldn't, uh, even though it should. I mean, it shouldn't be not running. That's what I tried to say. Good to be fun. Four, three, one. Okay. Byte ord. So that's the guy who should return an integer, but it doesn't. This means that the Py3 utils compat. Is this version info? Pi 3. So does it want to tell me that this is not the case here? Or that... Where's byte art again? Get compat. Ah, it's a different implementation, kind of. Hoo hoo. Yeah, maybe I have to fix that. Because uh, it seems to not return a number here. seems to throw a type error. Is that the case? Is that true? Python 3. Tell me about it. Python 3.2. Or to be uh, bx. Does it work? It does work. So honestly, I have no idea why. Why c? Ah, oh, come on. Well, I see is still bytes here. Uh, so tell me about it. Data is memory. Data zero is a byte. Oh, and then I do byte or it and I get a number. 
So this means that at some point here, I'm not doing the byte ord. Ha! Awesome. How could I miss that? Oh wait, 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 slowly. I think the difference here is that all of a sudden this is a memory view and a memory view returns bytes. So pi3 is true, so that all works as expected. But I think that's the change that happened with uh, SM map, which now uses memory view, whereas before it would use a byte buffer. So yeah, that's the thing. So that will be a fix for that. And let's see. And we enter a loop. We enter the same loop here. Ah, it's terrible. But it also means that, I mean, is it reproducible that the 2.6 version will always work? It will work. Whereas 2.7, starting from 2.7 and newer, it doesn't work. Nope. And I can as well use the 3.4, ah, sorry, 3.2, and it still doesn't work. Awesome. So uh, let's keep it, you know, let's take one after another. Let's just be sure we use a Python version we trust because right now apparently I just use Python 3.2. By the way, git db setup, we kind of know that 3.2 is working. So we can also put it here. I mean, it could possibly work once the zip or the stream problem is fixed. All right. And uh, question is, when does it fail? However, on Python 2.7 and 3.2. more about that later. So let's just uh, take this, even though I might change it a bit. Self. Oh yeah, my linter here, lints for Python 3. So we have to do it like that. Anyway, I mean, we could do it like that. I just want to print the length unused i cbr section integer yeah who cares really but i do sometimes <laughs> just sometimes oh yeah let's do it with s and let's put it here so it really the first time it goes in there it fails already i mean it goes nowhere right just goes nowhere. And probably it's the same with Python 3.2. Yep, same thing. Maybe it has to do with the memory view. No, wait, in 2.7 we don't get a memory view. No, no. There we get uh, something else. Okay, so let's just abort here because whatever happen whatever happens there, Let's abort here. Whatever happens there doesn't work. Uh, actually, I want to step through there. Um, breakpoint, setting a breakpoint. Uh, Python set breakpoint code something. Python PDB breakpoint. Yeah, how do I do this? 
I will, ah yeah, import PDB into PDB set trace. That will break. I will break here and see where that goes. Ah yeah, so what was that? Step in, step, step, step into. Next, yeah, I could do next, I guess. Uh, uh, maybe there is no step into, step over. Yeah. Maybe next is the best I can do, but I would love to know if there is some sort of you know, step in to, how does that work? Tell me, tell me what I can do here. Come on, what's the command line interface? Where is it? Oh yeah, there we go. Down, up, yeah, but I wanna step through the code, right? So tell me, step, execute the current line, stop at the first possible occasion, either in a function that is called or the next line. Step and next is continue execution until the next line in the current function is reached or returns. Step stops inside a called function, whereas next just stops at the next line. I see. So step is what we want and then probably next for a while. Okay, step. Size is what? Size is a full page. Step. Well, step. If size is, so now we are here, right? And what is size afterwards? Size might be zero. Min size or self s minus self size. What is self size? Zero, okay, that could be it. Self br by its red, okay, size becomes zero and there we get into a loop. But why is self size empty? That's not supposed to be empty. And I think we should stop as early as possible. Uh, self size, look at that. Here we set the size, if we get it. <gasps> that could be something. Maybe we don't really decompress this and uh, things go wrong from here. Mm hmm. Yeah, I've had a similar issue actually in the decom in the uh, lose object decompression reader. Where is it? A zip store SHA writer? No, 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 no. No stream. Maybe it's not even here. Maybe it's in the Git Python implementation because we are in. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah, that could be, that could be it. I will check though. What do I say here? Should really be enough. Seagit uses, uses this value too, and for good reason. It needs to be that high for the header to be read correctly in all cases. So maybe it should be even higher, huh? I think that, I mean, that would be the thing that I try. Also, I'm putting an assertion here. Assert. I mean, the size could be zero possibly. It, it would be valid to store an empty file. So the file size could be Zero. Yeah, so I'm putting in this assertion just now so that we can see what's going on there. Because I don't think that should be an empty file. Should it be? Let's see. Uh, no, I don't think so. That's kind of the offsets here and it looks big enough for us to be something. 
and I don't know what, what kind of object it is. I think this is the, the code, the object code, uh, possibly, but I don't know by heart what that means right now, at least. Okay, let's continue. Some more light shall hopefully enlighten me and make this work faster. Okay, I have one idea where to fix that. <laughs> and yeah, let's just step, go to the next line, size is zero, there we go. And that concludes our loop. Good. Now with the new assertion. Oh, look, the assertion didn't hit yet. Why didn't it hit? That is odd, isn't it? Didn't I parse the header already? When do I parse the header? I do parse the header when and only when the size attribute is queried. Which might not be queried here because it's provided to us already. Uh, really? Is that possibly happening? <clears throat> Let's abort here. As, at least let's abort just for now if the size is zero. And let's try that again. Okay. So there I initialize with the zero size. And I do wonder if that is correct. Maybe uh, the uncompressed size there already is wrong, huh? Up, uncomp size, where does that come from? Peg one, two, two. Uncompressed size, where do we parse that? Uncomp size, peg object header info. Yeah, maybe that goes all, all wrong. I mean, maybe the logic is wrong too. Somehow. Let's take this out again. Current bytes red. I mean, apparently it gets initialized with more data than it will ever read because its size is actually wrong. Uh, Yeah, let's print this for a moment. And let's also print the size. And then have a look at Let's have a look at the 2.6 version that actually works. Assert size so it gets initialized with the size and it's okay. Mhm. Mm Let's remove this for a moment. Yeah, good, that's... But look at that! Oh wait, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Ah, come on. It's the wrong Python version, 2.6. See? Here the first object is quite a different one. I mean, that's... That something that 
That's something we've already figured out, right? That's nothing new here. CBR, interesting. 42, here it's 43. What the hell? Uh, yeah, whatever. But it's totally different. So I guess, con considering that this is the first object here, that pack object header info doesn't do the right thing. And it, well, yeah, so here it does the size game. Uh, I will go in there. I will go in there. That's something I probably don't need. I will take this out as well, just to be sure. And PDB. Let's jump in there right away. Because here we get the uncomp size that is then later passed. All right. Let's do it. And let's first do it with a version that doesn't work. And let's take the two point, uh, the Python two code path there. Oh, we should jump right in there. There we go. And what's the data here? 3720. That uh, might already be too large. What is it? A memory view? That's odd, because in Python 2, it's supposed to be a buffer. Okay. Yeah, I won't go further here. Oh, that was Python 3. Damn it, why did that happen? Okay. Type data. Now it's a buffer. Okay, now it's as expected. Even though it's still too large. 3720. 3720. Okay, so that's the same thing. And let me guess if I do it with 26. 3720. Well, good. That's something. Should be a buffer too. All right. And okay, we're now in the working branch. I'm stepping in. Actually, kind of step out. Until the line number return continue execution until the current function returns. R return. Then we have uncomp size, which is two, two, three. That's what we expect. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay, let's just uh, hit next. Uncomp size is two to three, so that worked. Heh. Why is it zero then? Why is it zero later? What? I don't understand that. Let's go in. Ref delta. Is it a ref delta? Total relay offset, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe we have to have to get one more because that actually works. Could that be the case? Well, <clears throat> well let's just uh, 
keep going. It is a stream. Uncomp size should still be something. Yeah, it is. Delta info. There's nothing. Okay. But if I go in here, I should have a size, right? So that's not the one. Okay. So let's return and, well, what do I want? Am I skipping here? No. Okay, let's continue to the next one. So far, so good. 3720 again. Okay. Why is this, why is it giving me the same size again? Does it want to indicate some kind of issue? Uncomp size two to three. Okay. Next one. Same thing. Don't mess with me. Come on. Pack offset. Something is wrong here. Something is wrong there already. Oh, come on. It's probably super easy. The issue. Up, up. Pack. OB. Pack offset. 12. Well, it's still the first object, right? And then we continue. And I guess. We are still there. We are. What the hell? Where do I get my zero size? I thought I knew that there is a zero size. But so far I couldn't, I mean, I'm not doing this right, obviously. Yeah. Let's do some more printing. Offset. Let's just print the offset here. Yep. And yeah, no tracing there. Oh. There it goes into the loop. Look, 12, 12, 12, 85. And there, it's 12, 12, 12, 3, 11. Why is it the same thing multiple times? Does it really, I mean, obviously it tries to maybe just, maybe just kind of stupid calling there. Maybe it shouldn't. Maybe the, the call is triggered because I'm requesting so many streams. So that could be test related. That could be test related. I'm not going crazy about this one. 12 to 12, 12 to the fourth one is supposed to be much higher. And then, then things go out of, out of line here. It just goes wrong. Okay, so first of all, I mean, I have no clue really what the real problem is. First of all, I guess 819, you know, we have this <laughs> next bytes that should be should be good. And last time I just had to increment this and things work magically. So let's try this. No, not this time. Definitely not so. Let's go a bit crazier than this. No, not this time. I mean, it's not not even called, right? We had this already. It's not called. Parse header info is not even called. I think that's a code branch that is called for, called by loose objects. Could be. I'm not sure. 
because there is actually a different implementation for loose objects. Ah. Okay. So I suppose that when the offset goes wrong, why does the offset go wrong? The offset is coming from the pack index, right? Let's take it logically here. So the index is the thing that is important for that. Where did I find this obj offset, pack offset? Where was it here? Pack stream either. So the stream either obviously returns uh, the wrong things. Stream either. That's where the issue must be. <sighs> Let's figure that out. Why are there two versions? Self either objects. Yeah. May I just select this one or this one? Possibly, maybe? No. Stream either. That's pack entity stream either. And they all call either objects. Is there multiple implementations? Yes, there is. Assert pack file. What do I have here? Let's quickly jump in here and see what kind of thing we have. Pack file. Here we go. So pack file either objects and this one goes wrong. Uh, uh -huh. So start offset is still correct, but this thing goes wrong. Yeah. Where's my PDB line? Ah, uh, here it is. Good DB pack. Why didn't I find it here? Anyway, oh. okay, nothing, nothing there. Objects. Yeah, that's the one. So I probably wanna wanna stop in here. I'm curious. That's an interesting one, I must say. Uh huh. Per offset should be 12. Let's see. Content size. Okay. Actually, maybe I should set a breakpoint. Can I set a breakpoint in code? Yeah, I should be. If I go next, can I set a breakpoint here? Well, let's see. Data offset. Oh yeah, it's not yet defined. Fourteen. OK. 
Okay, so let's continue to the next one. Where's my third falls? Test pack. Yeah, well, fair enough. I should have went this year. Let's do it right away. Data offset, okay. Next one. Data offset. Question is, uh, where is this triggered? Stream either. Why is this always the same? So again, does cur offset? Oh, there it's eighty five again. I think that's already when things go wrong, huh? Yeah, I have to step through there more slowly, it seems. Just to board this. Go there again. And O stream size is two to three. That's as far as I think it's good. Cur offset is 12. And afterwards, it's 85. Okay. This uh, that's that's a byte compression reader, and that's where it goes wrong. Uh, so uh, tell me, O stream stream, tell me about yourself. Even though the size is two two three. It doesn't even read as much. It stops beforehand and it stops beforehand. Because huh, because reasons reasons that I do, I do not yet understand. <clears throat> so drops out of here. That's the loop. Do I still have access to this variable, by the way? CBR 71. What is this? Read only buffer which is definitely big enough. And size is two to three. And it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't scrub the stream to the point where it should be scrubbing it, which also means that here something goes wrong and maybe it's this thing again. Yeah, I think that this could be it indeed, that something here goes wrong. Oh, look at that. This goes wrong. Behavior change in Py27 onward, which requires special handling to make the test work properly. See? Maybe it's that. So this explains why it works in Py26, but not in Py27. Ha! Oh my God. I didn't know this code is called if, if it's a pack. But probably it's just a good thing, huh? That it's so consistent that the same code is kind of used everywhere. <laughs> oh, well. Okay. So let me just see. if this fixes it. And I know that I put this in for good reason. And now on Wheezy, 
this good reason is not a good reason which could tell me that something is you know maybe that's the wrong way of doing it maybe I have to figure out some property of the zip library to understand if I have to do this or, uh, or that continue data offset continue data offset continue yeah this looks a bit better can I just uh, continue then turn off the breakpoint and continue forever how can I remove a breakpoint temporary breakpoint is clear clear breakpoint CL clear all breaks no just this one disable enable ignore well maybe disable yeah possibly nope well then clear all breakpoints sure and continue what that didn't work clear clear all breakpoints at this line with a space space separate list clear those breakpoints oh possibly because i have this explicitly done here it doesn't really it does it all the time it recreates the breakpoint for me i think that's it that's what's happening here all right oh well that is fun i mean i knew that this probably is gonna bite me in the butt at some point and see now it happens it happened on wheezy and previously i didn't have to do this case at all but then no behavior changed you know then all of a sudden i had to put this in there to make it work work in your python versions oh I jumped okay so now once again let's see why is it still going in there oh I didn't save it huh didn't save sorry and there we go now it works ah damn it ah yeah well awesome great but for some reason now it will not work <laughs> on on OS X I think oh. ah come on think good db and uh, here I only have 2 7 and uh, 3 4 Get db test test pack. Ah, yeah. So here it actually crashes unless I have this special case code that magically makes it work. See? And I think the same thing. Maybe it's just an OS X thing, huh? Maybe I should do it like that. Uh, so let's try this. I think it crashes similarly. Yep, it does. So it's an OS X thing. Maybe, I mean, I didn't try 2.6 in OS X. Maybe it's really... Do I have Python 2.6? I do have that, so I should be able to try. Do I have pip 2.6? I do. Install. So now I'm on the Mac and I want to install nose test. Uh, oh look actually I don't want to be nose I think it is and I don't want to be root for this oh I do want to be root for this fine there we go so nose test two what which one is that now is that two six now or what? Yeah, we'll see. I will see. I will probably see that. Hopefully. Test, test. Oh no, wait. 
Side packages nose. I don't know where it puts where it puts the binary. Maybe it's not in the path. Let's figure out which version this is. Import sys this version two seven. No, that's not the right one. Okay, so somewhere somewhere is the binary. But where is the binary? Tools maybe? No. Nothing executable there. Python 2.6 side packages. Library. Where is this? User bin. Python 2.6. So, uh, nose? Nose? No, there is no. some symlink or something where is the executable ah. let's try that again all right so does it put it there somewhere actually it's yeah it's just that Okay. PyDog, Python. Nope. Extras. It should be in bin, that's for sure. But it's not. Extras bin. That looks interesting, but it's not what I'm looking for. Um, can I just run nose using Python M nose? Does that work? Yes, it does work. Awesome. So let's do it like that. Python 2.6 dash M nose and then git db test test pack. Nose is a package and cannot be directly executed because that is a functionality that was added later. Uh, okay. I hate that. Nose, nose dot. It has, I guess, a start, a run. It has nose.run. Okay, and then it runs. Fine, that shall be enough. Python C, import nose, nose.run. Okay. Yes. All right. So that naturally works. And this gives it, puts it into a loop. So on OS X, we really want this special case, right? Ah, but not on Linux, apparently. But I think on, on Travis, you know, it works everywhere. It works on Travis, which I think could use some Ubuntu. It works uh, on Travis like that, that's for sure. And it didn't work on Travis if I didn't have it. It's just on Wheezy where it doesn't work. So why, why is that? Why is that? I, I do not know. I haven't, I totally have no idea. So maybe the fix is wrong in the first, oh, damn it. All right, the fix might be wrong. Uh, so I could go for crazy conditions there if it's 
pi to six and uh, or wheezy, you know, I could do that, but that's so hacky. This will definitely fail at some point. It's, you know, next version and things will go wrong. So what's the difference between uh, the Python versions or the zip versions? Is there some sort of zip zlib? Some sort of version number that I could use? Import zlib. zlib. What do you have here? Uh, not so much. Zlib version, Zlib runtime version. Zlib runtime. I think that could be something we could use. Zlib runtime version. That's Python 3, by the way. And Zlib version 125, 125. Okay. Now, let's do the same. You know, Python 2.6 worked. Let's see what runtime version it has. And here, Python 2.6. Python 2.6 works. Input zlib, zlib. How was that again? Zlib runtime version, zlib version. Zlib runtime version. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, but Zlib version you will have, huh? One to five. All right. Maybe the. Did I miss? Did, did I have a typo in there? Zlib runtime version. I think not. I think I managed to actually write that correctly. But just in case, you know, let's do it like that. Okay, it doesn't have it. So that's already something I could use maybe to identify the issue. Um, so on Python 2.7, seven, where it wants the normal, I mean, where it wants this line, maybe it doesn't have the runtime version either. Either Import zlib, 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 ah, runtime version. Doesn't have it. Cool. <laughs> uh, zlib, zlib version. One to seven. Okay, that doesn't seem to be the point, but the runtime version here is missing. But maybe it's something that is, you know, I was in Python three. Oh, if the runtime version here is there as well, then this could be the thing to determine which code to use. So here I would expect it to be there. Ah, no, it's not there. Ah. I mean, here it's zlib125 and it's Python 3, so it's rather old, whereas the other one was zlib. Yeah, so that's not, that's not the thing. I mean, here, ah, that would, would have been too good. That's 127. I mean, the point is that in on OS X and one to five, it has this issue, and it has no runtime version. And oh. Oh, shit, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I can figure some something out between the zlib version and existing existence of the runtime version. Maybe it's a Python 3 thing though. And Python 3 has it, doesn't. 127. Uh, 
Yeah, runtime version seems to be quite exclusive. See, Python 2.6 even has 127. Maybe point no. I mean they have a newer Zlib version, that's for sure. And a new Zlib version might want just this case. That could be it. And uh, let's check the OSX thing again. Yeah, the runtime version is nothing I ever want to use again. Let's do it like that. Ah, print it. Okay, one to five, one to five, and it works with the old way. One to five, <laughs> and it doesn't work with the old way, and it doesn't have a runtime version either. So there's no way I can figure this out. And it was the same thing on other Linux distributions. So no. Maybe it's kind of the members that we have. Printed. Max W bit, Z best compression. Finish full flush, Huffman only, no flush, sync, flush. Uh, nothing. What's the error there? Zlib error, what's this? Ah, that appears to be an error string. Type nothing. What? Is it none or type type? Ah, it's a it's an error type. All right. Fine, fine. Well, what's max w bits? Maybe that's something I can use. Fifteen. So in two point six. Fifteen. Uh, sorry, two point seven. So it would be different now in 2.6. I would have something that can possibly help. Max W bits. 15 in 2.7, yeah, we know that. 15, okay, same thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, still no, still no clue. And it's so weird that all of a sudden, you know, this isn't working anymore. Maybe I should bring up another virtual machine and uh, test it on Ubuntu or Zubuntu just to see, uh, just to get an idea. Maybe, I mean, definitely this needs fixing, right? Maybe it's the wrong way to fix it. On the other hand, why is it different all of a sudden? I'm confused. I know that this part here was always a bit hacky just because Python wouldn't give you the, um, the data that the Seagit implementation has, you know, so you have to kind of figure it out yourself and it happened to be working. But now it doesn't. Hmm. There must be some way. But I'm I'm still totally unsure. I mean on, on Wheezy obviously 
it wants the old version. Maybe I can say something like this. Okay, if the Zlib version is above 1.2.5, then yeah, if we if it's above 1.2.5. Because on, you know, the th thing here is that apparently the Zilla version is newer on all these. You know, I think that's the thing. Zilla version. Ugh, import Zilla and then print Zilla version. Zlib Zlib version one two seven one two seven one two se yeah one two seven okay and here we always have two one point two five but have different behavior in a newer in a newer version. So here one to five, but it wants the second line, 1 1.5, 1 1.25, oh wait, 1.25 and 1.27, okay. So maybe that's it. Maybe it's a special thing of Python. I mean, I have to do it that way. And just to be sure, I will bring up another virtual machine uh, which is Ubuntu and maybe even CentOS yeah those, those are full UIs but I will just connect there Ugh. Byron at Debian VZ uh, can you tell me your IP, please, somehow? Oh, come on. Just logging in to get an IP here. Maybe there are better ways to do this, but I don't know them. If config, fortunately, I, I'm, I am allowed to call this one here. Yep. Oh, come on. Maybe. No. Didn't quite copy. Oh, yeah, probably didn't copy it because I should have hit Control C here. Like this. Or maybe like this. Let's do it like this. Let's be very explicit. There we go. Probably I could have memorized this one as well. And there's our login, yes. And the CD game again. Actually, we can just take this one and CD in here. And for some reason, it didn't change the shell name. I don't like that. Let's do it explicitly. Byron, Byron at so Ubuntu 64. Much better, oh, much better if I would hit the password. CD there, awesome. <clears throat> and then we do the version game again. Python 2.7, I would expect this to be 1.25. Um, like everywhere. Zlib, Zlib version. Oh, 1.28. So what? Okay, so I'm, I'm inclined to, I mean, my, my previous logic, it kind of worked, right? The 2.6 and everything else is better. But maybe it's the 1.27 version on Wheezy that is has some sort of bug. Zlib, 1.28, let's get the bug tracker. Maybe it's this particular version. 
Python Zlib bug tracker Zlib uh, change log maybe 1.28 okay oh there are multiple ones update do not force zcons for Linux cleanup contribution correct spelling error whoa that's a big one fixed fix mixed line endings and con so that's not that's really nothing 1.28 that's no reason I mean 1.27 seems to be a big one but maybe they use you know there are lots of sub releases here so maybe they, they use an old one and here there's lots more so maybe it is related to this that there's some sort of bug that causes this for me so I guess 1.27 might be broken for me that's it maybe even 1.26 who knows uh, let's run it on three point I mean which Python versions do I have three four and two seven good enough one two eight okay they at least have the same versions here and let's go with something older let's go with CentOS and try it and then I will keep all these uh, machines open and run the tests on all of them just to be sure that the new logic will then possibly work and that's really that's the best I can do and I know it's not really the best because maybe the real source of the issue is somewhere else uh, should I test FreeBSD? I think I can't really install anything there let's test Fedora 17 too yes let's do that let's test them all I would feel much better Byron at CentOS 6.5 ah, it doesn't really matter if it's 64 bit or not so show me oh I didn't hit it fortunately let's go in there get the IP no I have to restart it I have to restart it later okay let's try Debian then um, oh, sorry Fedora 17 let's try that Yeah, I probably wants to update the <laughs> parallels tools too, but that has to happen for me to be able to. There we go. Able to access my hard disk, my Max hard disk. So let's just reboot these guys and uh, yeah, have a look. I think that can be close. I won't try it on FreeBSD. I mean, let's not get totally crazy. I might try it on Windows though, Windows 7. Yeah. What does my memory consumption say? <laughs> it's all used. Really? There's quite some memory pressure there just because I have like three virtual machines open? That seems to be wrong. Speed recognition, one gigabyte, are you kidding me? Come on, what the hell? I mean, that must be a memory leak, right? I I mean, Apple sometimes can't do software anymore. Windows Server, I will keep you alive. OBS, uses quite a lot of memory too, but I can't kill it because that will kill the stream too. Okay, install D, yeah. I don't need you. Yeah, you can re relaunch automatically. I'm sure you will. Finder. Uses lots of memory too. I will relaunch you. 
eventually. <laughs> and software update D, I will relaunch you to eventually. All right, that's good enough. Still not enough. I don't know where all that memory is gone, by the way. It's a bit crazy. I mean, probably it's virtual memory here as well that I am kind of counting app memory file cache. So that stuff he could use. So I could easily bring up another virtual machine. That should be fine. But I'm still happy to have killed all these massive processes that, I mean, speech recognition, 900 megabytes, come on. I don't even use that. Silly. Okay, so let's restart these guys. Restart. And the Fedora is not quite there yet. All right, all right. Okay, let's try to keep track of that. I think that's a good idea. So on Wheezy, it uses zlib 1.2.7. On OS X, it uses zlib 1.2.5. And on uh, Zubuntu, I don't know which one is it. I think it's, it was at some point the latest version of of Ubuntu, but it might not be anymore. Maybe Ubuntu LTS or something. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. First, give me your IP, please. Oh wait, let's do the copy, copy explicitly. So here's the CentOS. Oh no. CentOS, please. Oh, I've never started that one before. Okay. Thank you though. Thank you for working with me here. And it changed the name of my shell. Thank you to remember that this is actually, can I change the title somehow? No. All right. So let's just go, actually I don't have to go there. I'm not, I mean, maybe I should go there. Oh, kind of slow. Okay, so let's try this. Python, what do I have? Python 2.6 only. Okay, that's kind of, well, I don't know. Uh, let's just, let's just see. I would, I would, I would run the tests to be sure that this really works then. Import zlib. Zlib, zlib, zlib version. Okay, one, two, three. I expected that it's kind of old. CentOS 6.5, OS X 10.10, zlib 1.2.3. Oh, Python. I mean, it's always all Python versions, so it's always consistent, I think. It's kind of an operating system thing, or the one who distributes this builds the respective Zlib version in there. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it kind of points to an issue that has been introduced into 127 and was removed in 128 because Ubuntu. That was the next question. Kind of worked. 
here is Zubuntu. <clears throat> I think the version, how do I get the version info here? Uh, Ubuntu, I thought it was some sort of file there. Uh, release info, release, OS release. Oh yeah, there we go. Awesome, I found something. OS release, Ubuntu 14 LTS. I think that's what I wanna put here. So 14 LTS, it's one to eight, right? Right, one to eight. 1.2.8. Can I have tables here, by the way? That would be awesome. Table, tables. I can have tables. Mm hmm. Let's have tables then, huh? OS and Zlib version. And then do I need this? Maybe. But then I definitely need this. I can just space this out a bit. Maybe. I will see. Okay. Okay. Not pretty, but it works. Awesome. So I can just kill the zlib prefix because it's clear that it's zlib version from the header. Okay, and next one is Fedora 14. Let's just go there. Here we go. Let's find out what the IP is. That one. Awesome. It's interesting, huh? Here it prints no address in there. Because right now, I you know this is kind of what I would hope to get when I copy their IP. Nice. Also interesting how different the, the, the different implementations are after all. Oh no, that's not the one. That's the one. And let's have another shell window. DT Byron at Fedora 14. Okay. I do hope that. Oh, did that work? Ha! Didn't work. Have to copy this again. 10 to 11, 55, 6. I can't even hit right click here. Edit copy. Okay, can it be that it doesn't have the tools installed, but it did have them installed? Um, media, PS, yeah, it does have it. Anyhow, 10 to 11, 55, 6, right? 10 to 11, 55, 6. And no server. Why would it be there? It's not even installed. Are you kidding me? That is amazing. Add get install sshd, please. Oh, what? Am, is this an RPM system? Okay. Yum, install sshd, please. So first thing you will notice when you use an RPM system is that it takes so much longer to do anything. So what? Uh, huh, what's going on here? Can it be that? Oh.
uh, well, yum search sshd Apache sshd really can I just have the normal one ssh open ssh okay that's that's the one I install install open ssh that seems good Yep. It is already installed. Well, uh, so maybe they don't use init. So I have to, is it upstart that they use? Upstart? Or, oh, come on. I have no idea what they, what they, what they work with here. And how I start SSH, I mean, I have SSHD, obviously, but uh, I would like to start as a, as a service, right? Maybe it has a service command. Service, yes. Service SSHD. I have no idea how I use this. Statues all service. Okay, I'll just look it up. I'm I'm unwilling to try this out here. Fedora 14 SSHD starting up SSHD server. Tell me, tell me how I do this. I thought, ah, oh yeah. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. You just have to know what kind of systems they are using. <laughs> Service SSHD start. Maybe I have to be root. I do. And I guess that is it. So please connect. 10 to 11556. So what now? Come on. Why are you special? Why are you special? 10 to 11556. That is indeed correct. Is there some, some sort of firewall on? It pings, but it doesn't like the port. Service if config, uh, if, uh, what kind of firewall does it use? Service status all. Does it have a firewall on? I have no idea. What else? Uh, maybe it's some, some weird config. Uh, is it started now? It should be. I mean, it certainly works for the local IP. And 10 to 11, 55, 6. Okay, I guess it's some sort of firewall if it allows local connections or it's some weird setting there. What kind of firewall does this thing use? Fedora 14 firewall. Basic firewall configuration. I just want to turn it off. Give me a name and I shall be able to turn it off. Um, no. Well, maybe yes. Maybe I do have a UI here. So why shouldn't I? Administration firewall. Awesome. Trusted services. SSH, yes. Ah. Trusted servers are accessible from all hosts or networks. So that's exactly at 22. That's a standard port, isn't it? Hmm. 
So it is already trusted. Can I just, maybe I can just disable you for a moment. And maybe it works then, huh? No. So that's not it. Port 22. Connection refused. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, I'm sick of this. I will just do it in the... Ah. <sighs> I'll just do it here now. Yeah. F oh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that I don't get. I mean, then it must be some some SSHD setting, right? It must kind of prevent outsiders to get in from IPs which are not local. Who knows? Ah, uh, well, I have no idea. Good. Then, let's just do what we came for. Import zlib print zlib Zlib version. Okay, that's one two five. And what kind of Fedora is that? Do we have some sort of fancy file release? OS release? Yes, we do. Fedora seventeen. Beefy miracle. Ooh. I'm closing you as a sign of my protest. Okay, let's keep keep the information here. Uh, oh. Fedora seventeen. It's one point two point five. Yeah. So considering that it works everywhere, I think it. And look at the version numbers here. We have to say that it's a 1.27 issue. That's really what I'm going to say about this. So I'm implementing this now. And uh, then I will test it everywhere. And if it works everywhere then, then I know that I'm not too far off here. And that's it. So if, if it's pi two six or zlib zlib version is 1.2.7 and we will certainly document this very properly once we have verified this is really working then do that okay so now in theory i can run all the tests here so 2.6 test pack fine 2.7 fine 3.4, fine. I will keep track of this. I will keep track. Works. Maybe I can use fancy Unicode here. What happens if I do not provide? Okay, that works too. So, Unicode, give me some nice symbols. Um, emoji, maybe? Objects, nature. Check. There we go. Does that work? Oh, apparently the window here doesn't, doesn't want Unicode. Fair enough, maybe it can display it though. It 